Audio sync in three, two, one. I do that every single video. Not always with the little chime, but I, I do the clap thing. I'm old school. Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend, and hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. Do you like pina colada? Getting drunk in the rain. Well, what's up, YouTube? Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number 22. Or episode number deuce deuce. Or double D. Wait, but anyways, I got a lot of stuff to reply to today. Some of these are just more like I'm going to make a short commentary on them. So there's definitely more stuff to talk about today, but it hopefully should be a shorter video. Two things before I do that. And actually one thing before I do the two things, this video is brought to you by my awesome Patreon subscribers. Thank you everybody who decides to randomly and I have no idea why give me money every single month. This video is dedicated to you. And as always, your names will be at the end of this video, probably next to me doing something stupid they'll still be there. So the two things I want to talk about today is today is the day I'm officially launching a Discord server. I held out for a long time. I didn't really see the reason to it. I just not a lot of value to me, but I randomly decided to do it because I started using it on a different person's server. And then I'm like, you know, if I'm going to be on Discord, I might as well just have a Discord server. Um, so yeah, I have a Discord server. If you guys want to join the server, everybody can. Links are in the description down below. And if I remember, I will also pin a comment with a link to my Discord server as well. It's got a couple bots in there. Zeus is obviously the best bot. Odin is a redheaded stepchild and has no idea what it's doing. Hashtag stab at the other admin. Speaking of other admin, look out for Liquid Syphilis. He's a little crazy, but he knows his stuff. Or Liquid Cypher, Liquid Cypher, sorry. Liquid Cypher, not Syphilis. It's a big difference sometimes. But anyways, there are some upgrades that are automatic depending on how long you're on the server. So that's cool. Zeus handles all of that. There's also a Patreon subscriber direct integration. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, you get a different colored text and a few more abilities, although it's kind of limited. I mean, it's a chat room. So, but you have special rooms and stuff too. But the second thing is I have a new review item, testing item type of deal. <sighs> I actually don't want to show the front. This is a Synology NAS. You've probably seen it all over the interwebs. They're doing a bunch of different advertising for it. It is the DS1019 Plus, four bay. And I'm kind of excited to open this up and actually start messing with it. Doing some testing already. Basically, I'm going to make a video dedicated to probably Plex abilities, like how much can it handle, what can it handle, setting it up, stuff like that. I'm also going to test out the camera software that's available for the operating system that's baked into the Synology NAS. So those are the two videos I want to make. I might even do like an overall review on it. Not really sure, but I have at least two videos in the hole. But I say this because if anyone out there has any ideas, recommendations, or just anything you want to see out of the new Synology NAS, just in case you're thinking about getting one or one like it, let me know in the comments down below. So with all that said, let's get to the first question and or comment, and that is from Scoobman. I love Unraid because of your videos. I wish you still had Blue Iris on a virtual machine. I'm having so many issues with my setup. Bring this up because it's literally the reason why I moved Blue Iris off of Zeus, which is my primary server. Now, if you don't know what Blue Iris is, it is an NVR software solution that connects to all your cameras. It has a mobile app. It's basically for security cameras. But as far as your VM thing, I did have Blue Iris running in a virtual machine. The virtual machine was running Windows 10 and the Blue Iris ran okay. But once I started getting too many cameras, I, I had a lot of issues. And the issues mainly stemmed from my hardware because I have no dedicated GPU or graphics card in my server. Uh, it's an old set of processors, so they don't have a lot of abilities in the first place. So I was really, even though I had plenty of cores and plenty of speed, I was really lacking in the graphics department. So I was just running into a bunch of issues. And I'm not really sure if it's related, but also I was having some issues with the Windows time or the virtual machine staying in sync with the rest of the world. Like it would be slow. So that was kind of a thing too. But either way, I ended up moving it to a different machine solely for the reason as I was having issues as well. So 
Hopefully you can get that sorted out. And I don't know if you're having some of the same stuff I have, but just to let you know, I couldn't solve the problem without actually updating my server. So I just moved it to an old X99 uh, 5960X computer that I had. So, sorry. Next question is from Throwing Fits. Any chance you could do a Ryzen 5 and 7 CPU with a Quadro P2000 Plex server build and see how that stacks up with Intel i5 slash i7 or even Xeon? Well, I can tell you throwing fits, this would be a simple thing to say, and that is probably not. Basically, when you're talking about all this stuff, you got the i5, the i7, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Quadro P2000. If I'm going to be doing all this, probably the Quadro P4000. These are many, many, many thousands of dollars worth of hardware that I would have to purchase solely for the reason of testing them against each other and probably some other related videos. But so just eh, the hashtag not rich can't can't do that. It's some people get free hardware for computers. Some people don't. I am one of those people who don't. So I wish I could. And I would actually like to test a Ryzen CPU with a P2000. Um, I would like to build like a budget, super powerful Plex media server and just test its abilities, not necessarily against a bunch of other CPUs that I'd also have to buy and build, um, but I would like to do something like that. And that is a potential in the future. But as far as buying the whole thing across the board and test them all against each other, just ain't got the bankroll for that. Next question is from 101 Your Mom. Question, I'm looking for a good router to provide good service in every room in my house. Do you have any recommendations? I do not want to have to use extenders if I don't have to. Well, of course I assume you're meaning a wireless Wi-Fi router. Uh, it really, there's, it's kind of a loaded question without more information as far as how big your house is. Have you tried other routers in the past? Were they cheap? Did they not work in every corner of your house? Obviously you're asking the question, but how bad was it? And the biggest thing I think for me is one, you know, how expensive was your router? Like, did you go top end or did you really cheap out? And two, where are you putting your wireless router within your household? That's a big thing. I mean, if you put your wireless router in one corner of your household, you know, separated by all the walls and everything in your house, you're gonna have terrible signal potentially at the other end of your house. But either way, as a blanket generic recommendation, the one that I use is actually the C5400 from TP-Link. It's a great router. I've used it. I've gotten a bunch of other free stuff with like mesh stuff, mesh routers and things like that. And I still use a C5400. It's old. It's still powerful and I get service everywhere. It's been a great wireless router for me and it's like an all-in-one pretty awesome thing. But if you already have a router and you got like an area where you're going to have a switch and other things hooked up to it, you could also consider getting something like a Ubiquiti access point where basically it would be an extension of your router that you have now. You can even turn off the Wi-Fi signal of your router that you have now. But if you install one of those little cup size Ubiquiti wireless access points, you can probably have some pretty good wireless access throughout your house. But again, that kind of goes back to what's your situation? Can you do something like that? Can you run at least one wire to set this thing up in your house in order to, you know, be centralized? I don't know. Next question is from Steve. I have a quick question and I hope you get and can answer. I have an NVIDIA Tesla K20. I was curious to use it on my Plex server. Would be a good choice for hardware accelerated transcoding. I'm running a dual LGA 13 such and such and such. Bunch of hardware specs. Let's just focus on the key here, the NVIDIA Tesla K20. Pretty much I had to look this thing up and back in its day, at least the one I found, $5,000. I think they're still like 1200 bucks. That's a pretty expensive card, first of all. Second of all, it's kind of old, so it doesn't have a lot of support for modern codecs. So really, according to NVIDIA's own website, it can't really handle anything past the color scheme of 420 H.264 codec, which of course means it can't do H.265 or HEVC. So while it is probably in its own right a powerful card, at least in its time, I would venture to say that it would almost be a waste of power, depending on what content you have on your server because most of the time your server would probably just default to the regular software transcoding and not be able to use the hardware accelerated of that big beefy graphics card you threw in it. Unless those two Xeons actually have hardware accelerated. I don't know. I didn't look that part up. But either way, if you want to get a graphics card, this is one that I've wanted to get into and I just talked about before. Look at the P2000. It's a Quadro. It's $400 and like $50 to $400 online, depending on where you get it. But it has no max concurrent streams. It handles all the things and it is just a great card, at least so the internet says. I've yet to buy one and test it, but everything online says that that card is a beast and it can handle a lot of stuff. So maybe do a little bit more research, watch some videos of those of that actually own the card, and that might be a better solution for you. Next question is from Cody. Can you say Jason bites back five times fast? Maybe. 
Okay, last video I stumbled a little bit, but I, I have days where English is hard. Jason bites back, Jason's bite. Jason bites back, 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 Jason bites back. Next question from Janet. How can I do me? I want to do an action figure of myself. This was a video on actually the Barnacles head. It's 3D printed the head of Barnacles and kind of interesting. I downloaded that 3D file and I just hit print. Well, I also sized it up or whatever to meet my 3D printer size, but that's actually a good question. And I, without actually testing it just for the purpose of making this video, I Googled how to make a 3D version of your own head using pictures. And I did find a website that kind of labeled out different software solutions that you could use in order to take a photo and make a 3D model from it. Something you can pull into and edit and you know tweak and probably export into a 3D printer file. I haven't actually went down the path of doing that. And since I actually haven't created my own like raw 3D file yet, I'm thinking maybe I'll use this as an option to try it out. I'll try to post a link down below to the website that I found, but uh, it's untested, there's a way to do it, and I think I wanna use it to create probably some sort of a, I don't know, like a, a Mount Rushmore of YouTubers. Next question is from Scott Locke, Patreon subscriber of mine. Hello. I know I hounded on the Dremel, but it's only the first part and I use my Dremel at a slower RPM. Nuclear speeds is going, you Dremel hand suck, blah, blah, blah. Uh, basically what he's saying is that sanding a 3D finish is a lot of hard work and it's a total learning experience. And I agree, which is why the Barnacles head that I screwed up with the Dremel is up there. And yes, I did probably sand it too fast with the Dremel. Next question is from Theo Baker. He said, three words, Jason, acetone vapor bath. If you do a controlled exposure, you will see amazing results. There are plenty of videos on it. It works for me every time. Hashtag follow up. This is an amazing idea because you just set it down, let it do its thing, and then, then just like wipe it off. So that's something I'm gonna try. Hopefully I won't burn myself or catch something on fire, but I'll, I think I have to get like a big bowl, something that's glass, big enough to hold a head or at least a bigger print like that in general and obviously order some acetone and some other stuff. But I like the idea of that because it's like you set it down and you come back later and it's ready. Well, you know what I mean. How's the PFSense router over two years now? That's a good question. And honestly, I forget about the PFSense router, which is amazing because, you know, some routers you have to like restart them and like they start wigging out and you, they literally just need power cycled in order to get back up to its functionality. But, I just updated my PSN's router less than a week ago and it was on 280 days or something, 70 days of uptime. And it was like way overdue for updates and it was just like, it works. You know, I got caching drive set up. I haven't had any drives fail. I should probably check into that. Um, I got, you know, all kinds of like firewall rules going in to play and like all kinds of blockers for ads. And I mean, it's, got a lot of stuff that I was like totally into when I built it. And since then I've just kind of set it and forget it and everything works. So it's great. But anyways, two years later, PFSense router is great. The, the, I think my favorite thing with the PFSense router is that although I know how to use it and I've done a lot of stuff and I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing, there's still a lot to it, which means I can expand and learn and grow and, and add things to it. If I want to sit down, take the time or get interested in something, PFSense can do it all. So it gives me room to expand or explore. I like that. So yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. Next question is from Vic. He said, Plex newbie here. So not having set up a Plex server yet, I'm researching options. The Nvidia Shield and a couple of USB hard drives is all I need to set up my Plex server. TIA? Is that t t or Oh, thank you in advance. Oh, okay. That's gutter. I've played with the Nvidia Shield on a couple different occasions. And honestly, the Nvidia Shield is actually really powerful in its own right. I don't know if they've updated the hardware in a long time, but it's still pretty powerful for what it can do. And by what it can do, I mean, it's a powerful Plex client and it's also a pretty decent Plex media server. So I think that as long as your needs don't surpass the storage ability on something like the setup that you just mentioned, 
then you should be good to go. It actually sounds like a very cheap way to have a Plex Media server, although with those USB drives, you're not gonna get any kind of redundancy on your data, so you're not gonna have like a parity drive that you would have with a NAS setup. Uh, so if you do lose that hard drive, you're gonna lose all of your media, so that might be something to consider. But yes, that sounds like a very cheap and effective way to start a Plex Media server, especially if you don't have one now. Next question is from actually Twitter. I was going through and Squirrel took me to Twitter. I'm just like, hey, I'm big fan of your channel. Quick question, reply Plex. Me and multiple mates share seven to eight servers between ourselves. Is there any way to view all my sources at once, like stack my seven, eight sources for one super view? And the answer is no, there's not. And it really kind of sucks. Like I've, I think I've asked or talked about this before, like as a feature that I wanted where I can pull all of my server info, like all the movies together and just have one screen instead of having to switch between the servers. Especially, you probably have on those eight different servers that you go through, all of them have a section called movies. So it's like, depending on what UI you're using, like the Xbox, for example, is kind of a weird broken UI. Um, it's just, it's kind of laid out, it's hard to explain, but basically it's confusing and it's time consuming and it would be super nice to have an option to pull them all together. If, well, let's say if the library names matched, you know, Plex, come on guys, you can do this. It doesn't have to be default. Just give us an option. That would be amazing. Pretty please. Next question is from Blast Rhino. So if you sub to someone, does it cost money each time you sub or is it free? I'm confused. This is actually on a video that I made on how to gift a subscription to a, a Twitch streamer. Uh, specifically, I featured Barnacles in this video because he is a Twitch partner and he, he does Twitch stuff and things like that. So uh, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can link it with your Twitch account and then you have basically one free subscription to a channel of your choice every month. There's some caveats that you do have to like manually renew your subscription to said channel. It's only the basic tier. So for the creator itself, it's like $4.99 or $2.50, whatever their cut is. But still, it's a great way to literally just give part of your money away from your Amazon subscription if you already have one. It's one of those features. Some people are like, no, don't use all your features. It's already too expensive. But I hate to tell you this. If you don't use it, they're not going to drop the price anytime soon. I just don't see that happening. But no, it does not cost money every time. It doesn't even cost money one time as long as you already have and are maintaining your Amazon Prime subscription. It's a feature that you get with your subscription. Next question is from Zacchaeus Maximus. I can appreciate moving the server without powering it down. It's all about the uptime, bro. I moved mine at 250 days uptime. Wasn't about to lose that. Thank you. Somebody gets it. Give this man a cookie. When you log in and you see uptime of 272 days, you think to yourself, I hate updates. Next question is from Pokey Kid Pie Hole. Weird pitch of a processor bored in a cardboard hole mentioning the internet's condom and the video being made by Bite My Bits. Lol. Only reason why I read this comment out loud is because I wanted to mention that you forgot that I said shove the SD card in the butthole of the pie in that video, not just to highlight the immaturity, sprinkle it in to videos, you know, like, like the next question is from Franklin. He says, how many terabytes do you have in your Plex server? I'm always wondering when watching your vids. Well, to answer your question, Franklin, I have 106 terabytes currently in my Plex media server. On top of that, I also have two 10 terabyte parity drives. That's serve as parity for all of the 106 terabytes worth of storage. And today, because I have two slots in my server and there was a huge massive sale on Amazon to get a 10 terabyte Western Digital External hard drive for $159, I now have two more hard drives coming in to take me to a total of 126 terabytes of storage. Got terabytes for days, but cheap storage is cheap storage, hard to pass up. Next question is from 2000 Jago. Where did you hear about this Chrome wanting an all out war against ad blockers? I've never heard about such thing and nothing relevant came up in search. Well, I will link in the description down below. Uh, basically, Chrome is working on an update or at least that's what they said they were considering doing 
at least January 10th-ish, if I remember right. Anyways, they were considering doing an update, and they probably still are, that will actually disable the root access that you can get through a program like uBlock Origin, for example. And I'm not an expert here, and I don't remember everything, but I'm gonna try to explain it as best as I can remember it. But Chrome was denying uBlock Origin and other similar ad blockers uh, on like a root level from accessing the websites before they get displayed. So the whole idea of uBlock is to well, block this stuff before you see it at a, or at all, and Chrome is somehow wanting to disable this for security reasons. Now, that might be a terrible and inaccurate description of what's going on. It wasn't really the focus of the video. It was more of me like, hey, I've got a pie. Let's put a hole in it and make a video about it. And for some reason, that freaking video took off. Holy bananas. It's like 200 plus thousand views. I did not expect that. The funny thing is, is actually I used that literally just to make that video and put it on the shelf with the whole thing of like, I have an Unraid server and I wanna put Pi-hole on the Unraid server and not actually run a separate device. I just haven't done that yet. Maybe because PFSense already has a bunch of features built in that you can do some of that stuff and also maybe because, I don't know, games. And that is actually the last comment and or question of the day. So guys, as always, thank you for watching and thank you to my Patreon subscribers for tuning in. Just like every Jason Bites Back video, if you want the best opportunity to get your question answered, post them down in the comments of this video specifically. I always check this video first before I move on to the regular comments on my channel, which those can be a lot. And it's like a lot of sifting. And I'm like, like sometimes a week or two into them. And then I find what I need and then I stop. So. You know, this video is the best chance to get your answered question or your question answered. Blah. But hey, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good day. You know, I really, I kind of feel like I need to un. I, I want to open this tonight. You know, I'm not gonna do anything with it. I just, I want to update or up open this. And I feel like I might have. Okay. Yeah, boxes and boxes and boxes. Quick installation guy. Boring. Boring. Ah, yeah, baby. There we go. There's the good stuff right here. It's a Nash. Here's a little secret when it comes to stuff like this. I can't touch it. I know, it sounds weird. Can't touch it though. You wanna know why? Because I have to get B-roll. I need B-roll before I get all, you know, touchy-feely with this. And apparently this has a key. I'm opening this because I think they're supposed to have a couple hard drives in here for me. They do. Oh, Seagate. I knew that was coming, but it still hurts. I mean, Seagate is a wonderful hard drive.
Honestly, I, don't, I mean, I haven't used any of the new Iron Wolf stuff, so I don't really know. You know, it's just old wounds. Okay, okay. There's two of them. There's two of them. Okay, so two four terabytes worth of storage to do my testing. There you go. You literally just watched an unboxing video and a Jason Bites Back vomit words video. Bye.